Hello, this is Donna Cato. Welcome to my channel. Now, in today's tutorial, what we're going to be making is this necklace, okay? So it is Starry Night on one side and Mud Cloth Canes on the other. By now, if you've been following along, you probably have a lot of Starry Night Canes and um, hopefully you have some Mud Cloth as well. So as you can see, it's totally reversible. Now, one thing about this particular design, this is the first one I made. And because of the way the wire is pushed into these last leaves, it's critical that you push them in at the right angle or these pieces either stick up or maybe they stick down funny. And um, I saw that as a problem with the basic uh, design and engineering of the piece. The way I got around it and the way we're going to do it is by making these round beads at the end and anchoring the wire into them instead of directly into the first leaf. And in this way, I found it much easier to make the adjustment by turning the screw that uh, attaches the first the first leaf to the necklace. And in that way, they are guaranteed to lie just the way you want them, flat. And they don't stick up, they don't stick down. You've avoided the problem. Just with the addition of these two little balls. Okay, so let me set that aside because that's, of course, later on. So you can tell that they're graduated sizes. Now, I used to throw away all my old business cards. I don't anymore. I use my bus my old business cards to make things like this, templates, okay? So the first thing I did was I drew the largest one. Then I took another business card. I put it right underneath, and then I drew a slightly smaller one, as you can see. Then I took the smaller one, and I put another card behind it, and I finally drew the smaller one that was smaller than that. So now I have graduated sizes. Like so, small, medium, large. And of course, they're not all going to point the same way. When they're put together, maybe the center one is like this, maybe the next one's like this, maybe the next one's like this. We'll see in the design. Anyway, so it's quite simple to make them. Now, to cut them out, I just use, first of all, I have these cork. This came from Ikea. I think I got three of them for five bucks or something. So I'll just show you how easy it is to cut. Let me just take another business card. And quickly draw a shape. For you and and you know this leaf shape is quite simple isn't it it's just two curves that come to a point at the end so that's really as difficult as it is to draw it now I take my scalpel and you can use a craft knife or a scalpel actually I'm sorry but this is a craft knife it is not a real scalpel. And you're just going to insert it. And because I'm cutting on the cork, I will cut through the paper, cut into the cork. But it's not that difficult to do. Just like so. And of course, because this is such a simple shape, it's really not hard to do. Like that. So now I have the positive and then I have the negative and I'll use the negative because it's actually kind of easier to use these rather than the actual positive that you cut out. All right, let me set that aside. Now, in terms, of, we're gonna start on this uh, the Starry Night side. So I am gonna use the following. I have three greens, basic greens. Then I'm going to use a yellow, and I'm going to use this red. Now, if you have just this much, it's plenty. This is plenty of cane, okay? Then, rather than using black, which is what you see in these pieces, you see the black vein down the middle, and then the black edging 
I have decided that I will use this. Now, what this is are, I made a Starry Night cane out of the cut ends of the mud cloth canes. And this is what I got. I really like it a lot. So this is what it looks like all rolled out and texturized. So I think this will look nice with, um, with the canes. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the largest one. Just going to put it right there. And this is just scrap clay that I've rolled through setting three on my pasta machine that starts at zero. So it's not very thick at all. I'm going to take anything that you want to use to just lightly incise into the surface of the scrap clay. What this is is a very tiny ball stylus. Okay, so I've just traced the actual leaf directly on to the scrap clay. Now I'll just free draw the vein running down the center, like so. Okay, so I'm just gonna push these aside because they get in the way a bit. And each piece that you cut from the Starry Night Cane, you will treat the same way. First thing I'm going to do is cut approximately, oh, I would say it's a two millimeter thick piece, just like this. I'm going to roll this through setting number five on my pasta machine. Now, if you watch the other classes, I had been rolling through setting six. This is a different machine. So when I did setting six through this new machine I'm using, it was a bit too thin. So that's why I'm doing setting five. So if there's any confusion about that, the only reason I have stepped down to a, a, a lower setting is because of the difference in the two machines I was using. So you will make that determination for yourself. because on this machine, setting five is about the same thickness as setting six on my other machine. What can I say? They're made for food. And uh, I guess the difference between five and six might not be as critical if you're making lasagna. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my texture sponge. I'm rolling them together through the same setting. Okay, and let's carefully peel it off, like so. Now here I have a choice as well. I can make the center vein run this way, for instance, so that the sides of the vein are running parallel to the sides of the leaf. Or I can take my little blade And I can cut very thin strips and have it running this way. And I think that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm going to bring it out to a point right there. I'm sorry, I've got to move everything over just a bit. like so. So it's just a, a wedge. I'm just going to push the tip over just a little bit with my blade, pat it down lightly, and now I will cut another piece. This one wasn't quite long enough. 
and I'll straighten it out. And it looks to be approximately that width. Hopefully I'm right. Maybe I made it a bit too thin. Yeah, that's just a tad thin, I think. Cut off the excess, like so. I'm not sure this is critical, but it's just a very tiny difference in the width where the two pieces are meeting. So I'll just kind of push them together. All right, so let's take, I really like this one a lot. I know this is kind of at a funny part in the cane, but I'm going to try it and see if I like it. Making the same approximately two millimeter cut Roll it through 75. Roll it again through with the texture sponge. Like so. All right, so first I'm gonna cut a nice Make a nice tidy cut on the end. Let's just lie it down right there. Now I'm gonna just cut it. I'll cut the finished shape later and just put it on like so. Now this piece I'm just going to set aside on another piece of deli paper because I may need it for another leaf, okay? All right. Now let me see if I can use the same. Yeah, this is gonna be fine. So I will just use my, uh, my little template and cut the sides like so. Remove the excess. Okay, so this side, this is the central piece. And in my examples, in the actual mud cloth example, the central piece had this red, and, and so I will do that. I like the piece with the other colors too, that it's not all green. So let's do the red. Now this time, instead of arranging the, um, the leaf colors so that the stripes are perpendicular to the center, this time, this one will run parallel. Okay. Now let's use this again. Dun, 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 dun. It's like this. Center. Right 
there, right there. Okay. Oopsie. Did I pick the wrong one? Oh, I picked the wrong one. Ooh. Oh, and there goes my dog. This is the big one. Okay, so you guys don't get confused like I just did, but it's not really that big a deal. I'll just pat that area down and pick up the right one. I can't believe I did that. Well, you know, it's not clear, so I couldn't see through it. And I have to admit to you guys, I thought it was the right one, so it can happen. Okay. And this piece will then go back onto that like so. All right, so there's the first leaf. Now, to cut it, you know, maybe I just should have cut it all at the same time. Maybe. Now, you know, it's not such a difficult thing that the missed opportunity is so critical. So I'm actually making two extra cuts. But you see, if I had done that with the wrong template, then I would be doing the whole thing over again. So I will start working on the neck. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to set the small one aside so I don't make that mistake again. But now it's time to make the middle-sized leaves. So do exactly the same thing. Now one of them is going to face the same way. And it's also, that was also upside down which will also alter the shape slightly without changing it at all. And then I'm gonna flip the card around so, and then one will be like that, okay? So let me make the next two, and I will be making them with probably all the greens. I might actually do one of these with the yellow. I haven't decided yet, but uh, you will see shortly, okay. I'll be back. So I finished all five of them and I placed them on a tile. This is the way they will be arranged in the piece. So now these have to be cured in the oven. So I will cure these for oh, half an hour at 300. I'll be back. So here are the pieces. They're cured. They're cool. I took them off the tile. And now it's time to put the um, mud cloth canes on the back side. So the canes we're going to use are from part one and part two, part three and part four. Plus we're going to be using that uh, Starry Night cane that I made with the cane ends. And that's what we'll have once again as the vein in the leaf. Okay, so this is the front. In order to work on the back, well, we've got to flip them over. All of them are flipped over because the correct shape is the back side, not the front side. Okay, this is what I used for this one for the front. You can see it fits, but it doesn't fit for the back because the two sides are different. Okay, 
So what I'm doing now has got to be perfect for the back side, not the front. So I'm going to take and I will trace the back side. like so. Let me just set these aside. And that is the correct order of go. Okay, I'll just push them all the way over like this. Okay, so I'm going to take, once again, rolled, it's, this was rolled through five and then uh, rolled through five again with the texture sponge. Cut a little bit of a wedge here, and I will simply put this on the leaf. Just like that. Now I have far fewer of the mud cloth canes than uh, than the starry night canes. So what I'm going to do is make the center one, and then the two on the sides will be the same, and then the two, the two smallest will be the same. Mirror imaged, but the same canes will be used. All right, so let's begin by using this big guy. All right. Now, the goal here is to cut slices that are the same thickness as the vein. Okay, so that's the goal. I take my blade and just cut slowly down, trying to cut them exactly the same. And I think I'm going to need a second one. So I will do that now. Set that aside. Okay. I'm gonna take this. It's gonna fold over because all these canes are here. Just lay it in there like so. And that's pretty good. They appear to be about the same thickness. Now I'm just gonna cut off a bit of the end so I get a nice squared off corner. And what I will do on the next piece is cut to make that nice corner again. This little guy will go right there. And I will ease it in like so. Put this aside. Now, the other side, I think I will use this, this one. Once again, I'm going to try to cut it that same thickness. Just do your best. And then just push it right up against the center vein like so. Let me get this. Once again, I will cut to make a corner. Then I will cut again here, make a corner. And I will press the two together. Oh, 
Okay, that's pretty good. Now, I did not texture these, but I want to. So I'm going to take the texture sponge and directly texture the cane slices. I wouldn't roll them through the pasta machine with the sponge because you can't control, because they're not totally perfectly uniform thickness and you know, you're gonna get distortion. Might not matter much, but I think it's better to just take that sponge and sort of spot. Okay, so let me double check one thing. The thing you have to check now is to make sure that this is the right side, that this is the right side up because they're different. Well, also you can see the white, so. Duh, I could see the white. Duh. Okay, so I've got that down. Gonna take my craft knife. Someone, somewhere in my studio, I have real scalpels, but I traveled to England with them once and, <laughs> and the security people, when they checked my bags, my checked bags, because of course I wouldn't carry them on, uh, they kind of took them. <laughs> So, lucky for me, craft knives do a pretty darn good job. All right, so there you have one. Now, each one of these is pressed to the back. Pressed to the back of the cured piece. Okay. Take my liquid and apply it like so and take this piece and press it on you'll be able to uh, to move it a bit Like so. You know, I think I will sand it after it's cured. Uh, I could trim a little away. Move that over just a tad. All right, so that is the center piece. And then the pieces to the right and left are done exactly the same way. Now you can choose where you're going to put your various canes. I did a sample kind of an example of what I wanted the back to look like. And so you can see I just made this, although I flipped them. Doesn't really matter that much because the canes right next to that are this and this. And you can see that to the right and the left, they are the same but mirror imaged. And then the ones on the end are actually the same cane I did in the center mirror imaged so you can see what the arrangement is for the canes that I used. So what I will do is replicate these, these, the same way I did by using the actual piece, then apply the liquid and then press it on and then everything will be cured. But I'll be back when I get all of them done. All right, so you know what? I managed to put all the ones I had made on the backs here. Okay, so that's good. That's good. 
Uh, that's good. That's good. And uh, that's good. Now, when I made the Starry Night side, the base sheet that I worked on was setting three. Now, when I made these, uh, the mud cloth side, I used setting five because you know what? It doesn't have to be that thick. If I had done precisely what I did the first time, it would have been quite a bit thicker. So, you know, it doesn't have to be that thick because of the way we're putting it together using little screw eye pins. I don't have to drill holes and get cord through the actual piece. All right, so that's that. And now I'm going to put them back in the oven and they are going to cure for another. Oh, I think I'll just make it 20 minutes this time because I've got to finish the edges and it's gonna have to be cured one more time. So this time I'll just do a 20 minute quick bake and uh, then we'll finish the edges, bake it again. All right, so they're out of the oven, they're all backed. Let's see. Now, what you have to do is sand the edge all the way around so you can see. Oh, you can see the difference between these two. You see this one's been sanded and this one has not. So I'm just going to sand this one quickly. So I'm gonna get rid of that on the, on the tip. And I'm using uh, P80, the Aubranet P80. I really, really like this stuff. It takes the clay down very, very quickly. And because it doesn't have real sand or grit on it, you will get this sort of thing, right? You get this, the sand, the actual clay, uh, the clay bits that you've sanded off, but no uh, sand, <laughs> actually. Okay, so this is all I do. I just take it. Now hold on to the piece and I run it. Just run the edge on the sanding paper. Like so. So you can see how quickly I picked up Louis fur and dusty fur and probably my own hair. Okay, so that's how quickly that happens. Doesn't take long, but it makes a big difference when you edge the piece, which is what we have to do because the side as this stands, even though it's been sanded, sure doesn't look very good, does it? So we've got to cover it up, which is easy enough to do. Okay, I think we're ready pretty much. Okay, so I've done all the pieces. All right, so let's start. Let's we'll start with the big one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put poly paste all the way around. And I'm gonna use the poly paste because it's a little thicker. And uh, when you sand using the Abra net, what happens is you really rough up the surface. So I find it helpful to use poly paste instead of liquid makes it a little bit stickier, okay? Just stickier. So there's one side. Let's quickly do the other. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. Set that aside. And here is what remains of that uh, the Starry Night that I used to create the stem down the middle. So I'm going to use it. All right, so let me cut. It's approximately that thickness, or that width, excuse me. So let's just take a piece and lay it on the side. Work it around like so. Take the next piece. And repeat, just keep working it around. Until you've added this edging around the whole piece. So, and then trim. And I will be right back in a second. I just realized I left my heater on, so I'll be right. Apologies, yes, I had left my heater on. As you can tell, I'm wearing a... <laughs> It's a little cold in my basement, so, but uh, that's kind of inexcusable. I really should have turned the heater off. All right, so then it's just a matter of taking a blade and just cutting the excess away like this. And I think in another class, I, I talked to you about angling the blade slightly so that the tip is a little up and the uh, the other end is a bit down so that you don't smear the clay across the front surface of the piece. All right, so let's turn it over and you just repeat the same thing. Trim away the excess. And I really like using this instead of the black. I like this very much. All right, so there's one piece, and I will have to repeat the process for all of them, but you see what the difference is. That outline really does, uh, I really like it. It defines the shape nicely, and it nicely finishes the edges. So that's what your edging looks like. All right, so let me finish that, and, um, and then I'll be back. All right, so all the pieces are edged and they're all ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to put them in the oven for half an hour uh, at 300 degrees and then I will be back. So I almost forgot, we've got to make two little beads. Two little beads. Right here, right here and here. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I rolled just this little piece, a little cylinder of, um, of scrap clay, and I'm going to wrap it like so. 
And as I said, it doesn't have to be very large. Just be, you know, tiny, small, like so, okay? You don't want them to be too large because if they're too large, then they sit too high off of your body. You want something that is small enough so it has a low profile and it won't pull the rest of the pieces up because it's too deep. All right, so just make two small beads. Two small beads like that. It's a good size. And then toss them in the oven because they have to cure. I'm just pushing the center down with my fingers and then drawing the cane from the sides up to cover the scrap. Okay, so there are two of them and they're quite nice. And I think I'm going to texture them because everything is textured. Just like so. Okay, that's fine. So now they will go in the oven, just like that. I'm not gonna drill holes in them or anything. Let's just go in just like that. So I'm back again. It's day two and um, all the pieces are cured. So now I'm ready to prepare each piece and that involves putting screw eye pins in each piece. Now each piece requires two, even the beads, one on one end, one on the other. And they are linked together with oval jump rings. So what I did here, and it worked out really well, was measure from the tip to where that eye pin should be drilled in. That was a quarter of an inch. And I did the same thing to each piece. They're all drilled one quarter inch from the top to where the eye pin enters the piece. Okay, so here's my little ruler, but you know what? It's hard to deal with something this long. So I just measured off a quarter of an inch on a business card, and that's what I'll use. Because this isn't difficult, but sometimes you wish you had a third hand or something to hold on to it when you make your measurements. And I know they do have things called third hand, so... I'm going to investigate getting one. Okay, so there's the tip. There is the little quarter inch mark. And I'm going to take my needle tool, put it right there, and try to locate the center. All right, I need the center. And that actually looks pretty good right there. Okay. Now I am going to take a fine drill and I'm just gonna start it just a little, just maybe making that hole just a bit larger. And it may be a little bit easier for the little eye pin guy to seat itself. Now, before I put it in, I'm going to take a little drop of super glue and put it in the hole. Close that up. I'm gonna take my little pliers. I find that this helps. 
grip the eye pin, put it in the hole, and twist. And at some point, what will happen is the screw itself finds its way into the clay, and then all you have to do is hold on to the screw and twist the piece, and the screw sort of pulls itself through the clay, like so. All right, like that. If there's any extra anything, just get rid of it at that point. So when you look at the piece from the front, you will see these little eye pins sticking out sort of perpendicular. Now, that's up to you. With this particular piece, I had them more visible, you can see. I didn't turn them so that the side is perpendicular. You can actually see the eye pin. And then the, um, the connecting O-ring is what you see the side of. You know, I, I don't know that it matters, just depends on what you like, because when I put these together now, what will happen is you'll just see the shot of silver coming out of, uh, out of the bead, but then you'll see an oval jump ring like this. Okay, so that's kind of up to you. So that's how we're gonna do all of those, just like I showed you. Now, doing the, the, uh, the little beads is the same. I know where the ends are, one there, one there. I will repeat the process and put two O-rings, screw, excuse me, screw eye pins in both ends. So I will do that and I will be back. All right, so I'm back and now it's time to put, uh, to connect all our pieces. Now I'm going to use my oval jump rings. I have two sizes. I have the larger and then I have this one that's smaller. Now if I use the larger one, of course the pieces are going to be spread out further. If I use the small one, they'll be closer together. So I'm going to use the small one. I'm using oval jump rings. It's the only thing I use. And in a situation like this, Maybe they're not quite as helpful because gravity doesn't work the same way when you're using them side to side as when you're actually suspending something down. But I happen to think they are still safer, more secure than round. And there is enough room. I could actually put two in each hole, and maybe I'll do that later. But when you're using jump rings, I'm sure you guys know, but I'll say it anyway. You don't open by pulling apart like this. You open by gripping both sides and then twisting to open, right? And then you just do the reverse when you put them back together. And I think I will put two on. Visually, it won't really make any difference if I put two on. And um, it'll be more secure. Okay, so let me get the rest of this one on. And then I will have two on the ends. And then we will attach to the balls. I'll be back. All right, so I connected them all. I did double O-rings here. And you know... It's been a while since I made these, just a little while, and uh, we're going to deal with these in a moment, but we're not going to connect them yet, okay? All right. Now, let's look at our wire. Now, this is one of those wire chokers that unscrews. And it's kind of a pain sometimes to get on, but it is more secure than the magnet. Now, if I just cut in the center and I put this in, well, the whole piece would get quite a bit larger and these leaves would hang lower on my body. What I really want is I want it to be more like a choker. So this is how much I want to remove. 
Okay, that is how much I want to remove. All right. So I guess I'm just going to cut it. But I am going to leave myself a little bit of leeway. I will cut here closer to where the first two are connected. And then I'm going to unscrew this. We'll deal with these as two separate pieces. And I will cut the other end. Okay. Like so. Now I know that I should cut more. And to tell you the truth, these give you a little bit of leeway too. This choker is not really, really tight. So what I'm going to do is cut a little more off the ends like that. Now let's put it back together. Let's see, I'm right-handed, so I will screw it with the right, and let's see, which is the primary color? What am I going to wear mostly? Am I going to wear mostly the earthy colors, or will I go with the leaves? And knowing me, I'll go with the leaves. So I'm going to put the screw clasp on the right side, the screw part on the right, because I think that's, I'll use my right hand. So this is what we have so far. This will be here. This will be here. And this will be anchored inside. So I'm going with it. I am going with it. That's all there is to it. Going with it. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is glue the ends of this, these, into this ball. One in each side. So I'm going to take approximately, let's say the width of the pliers, like so. And I'm going to make a bend. Okay. I'm going to continue to bend it, and then I'm going to flatten it. Like so. Now I will repeat the same thing with the other side. So these two ends will be pushed into the cured clay balls. Now I have to prepare the cured clay, the cured clay ball. So I will just make, indicate where the hole is going to be. I will start by drilling it out a bit like this. And then I am going to use one larger drill bit. I have so many drill bits. Let me use this one. Just a bit larger. I do. I think I showed you guys how many drill bits I have. I have so many. 
Okay, so let me use this. This is actually large. You see what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this in. But if I drill a hole this big, it'll be loose. So I can't. I have to drill a hole that is smaller. But will enable me to actually push it in. I'm finding every drill bit but the ones I want. Okay, well, let's see what's going to happen here. That might be tough to do. That might be a little hard. Okay, let's try this guy. Just a few turns. Maybe it'll help me just get it started. And then I will jam it in. Okay. So let's take the glue. Put the glue in the hole. And then I'm going to grip it with my pliers like this. Find the hole and push it in. Just push that baby in. And it's going in. It's going in slowly, but it's in there. And sort of the harder it is for me to get in there, kind of the better. It's not going to come out so easily. All right. I am getting it in there. I mean, it's not coming out. It may never come out. Okay. And then, of course, any excess here, I will just take my pliers and trim away. Now I'm going to repeat with the other end. i start with the pilot hole. Enlarge it a bit. I think I'll drill further in. And take the other drill bit. Enlarge it a bit further. Just a bit further. Take the glue, put it in the hole, okay, grip the end with your pliers, and push it as far in as you can. Now I have them attached like so. Now I'm going to use these O-rings again to attach these together. Now I think this looks good because when it lies, these two pieces are pretty much, you know, they're in the same um, orientation, you see. It's coming out perpendicular. This one, when it's relaxed down, it's pretty much the same way. So let's just attach that. Now, some of you may want a more specific length for your necklaces. Well, I think you can work that out. I tend just to go, ah, this is, you know, perfect for me. And um, and so my pieces aren't like exactly 16 inches or 18 inches or whatever. But then again, I'm not a manufacturer. If you were to manufacture something like this and make it, then you would have to be able to make it 
pretty much consistently the same way, the same length. And it might take you a few tries to establish what the perfect length is, but that's what you would do. So let's just attach this and see how it lies. Come on. So one of a kind is perfect for me. Okay, so now I've got them and I think that this, when it's on, is going to lie perfectly well. And it's not going to, the ends won't flip up. And so by using the ball and by attaching with these O-rings, you have a little bit of play there so that the piece is going to, gravity will take over and the pieces will lie flat. Far different than the uh, first one that I did where this wire was embedded into these first pieces. Well, you know, if you didn't embed these wires perfectly into these pieces, then you were gonna get that flipping up here and there. And uh, it, it couldn't really be fixed too easily. So that's what we have here. Now, one last thing, when I cured these, I just put them directly on the tile, right? You guys saw that. I just put it directly on the tile to cure. And so I did get some shiny spots. That's what happens when you cure directly on a tile. They don't really bother me. I kind of like them because every now and then you get this bright spot, this reflection hits up. But if that were to bother you, then the way to avoid that, and I could have, but I, I didn't, but it's okay, would have been to bake, to put a paper towel or to put Kleenex or something on the tile and then bake it. Then you would have no, uh, no shiny spots at all. All right, so all I have to do is put one more O-ring here, one more O-ring there, trim the ends, and we're done. I don't know that you need to watch me do this. Especially this, because I have to go find my... I have different pliers for this kind of cutting, because I've got to get way down in there. Yeah, so I've got to go find them. I forgot what they're called, right angle cutters or something like that. So I will do that. If you want to avoid that situation, then make the fold shorter. Okay, because I could have made this fold shorter. That little tail hanging out could have been shorter and then I wouldn't have this issue. But I didn't, so now I have to fix it. Okay, so that was that is the end of class, actually. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you make them. And you know what? Uh, somehow I would love to see them. So if you go to my Facebook page, my art Facebook page, or um, I don't know if in the community part of YouTube you can you can actually post pictures. Well, I would like to see. So somehow we will have to work that out. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Until we meet again, I'm Donna Cato. Goodbye.